Could the color card post the colors? If 
I could ask uh, Reverend Michael Adeboto from St. Edestine to offer the invocation this morning. Good morning to you all. God of all creation and Lord of our redemption, we come to you this day, thou the giver of our, of our works and calls in life, and we ask you to accept our invocation in gratitude for this new property which we open today. Every gift in us mirrors your greatness and glory. Your Holy Spirit infiltrates and inflames all that you have made and sealed with your mark. May your sacred power sustain us always and keep our handiworks in being and in activity. You are in the breath that we breathe and in the light of every soul. May this same light of yours, O oh God, bring a new dawn and meaning into the lives of those in whose names and for whose causes we have gathered together this morning. May your perfect light brighten the dark areas of the human experience, especially on the global scene. May your divine illumination ease our family and professional challenges. May it shine on our growing up and on our aging, on this city of Brooklyn and on our entire nation. You are present to us and desire gently to make your will known to everyone and above all to anyone who might have looked away or forgotten it. All who live all you service and need to offer you constant gratitude. We bless you, God, for all good endeavors that you allowed to spring up and out of these hearts and souls that you have made. We thank you, God, for all the good people, friends, and supporters of the Father Bills and Men's Spring Housing Project. We praise you for this new property that has been developed and the ones which we see around us and which continue to bring relief to those in need of homes and respite, comfort, rest, and decent living. We extol you because you have blessed us with this noble project and provided the aid to build and have accompanied its accomplishment so that it may cater for the aspirations and needs of our veterans as well as our other sisters and brothers and their families. May God bless these new homes and make it holy and safe. May he make it a fitting dwelling that will give succor and comfort to the weary and homeless. May all who live here receive grace to carry on their lives to the best of their God-given abilities. May they rediscover themselves <coughs> and their dignity, regain their energy and confidence, renew their happiness, create and find new friendship and neighbors. Above all, may your love enable them to love more and anew once more, and to forgive and heal any ills and hurts. May these our new neighbors be embraced and welcomed home by every one of us who live in this neighborhood. We ask this blessing in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. <coughs> well, welcome everybody. This is a, a tremendous day. We're so excited for you all to come. Today we're going to hear a great story about how a local community, state officials, federal officials, state lenders, bankers, came together to develop 23 efficiency apartments on a parcel in the city of Brockton 
that prior to this had been abandoned and distressed. The really cool aspect is that this site had a very special meaning to many of us. That is the former site of the Phantom Hospital and then Catholic Charities. We are very honored that this new housing project will carry on the tradition of providing care to our residents. We received a total of 148 eligible applicants for this project. 22 of those applicants are homeless veterans. So at this point, we know that more than 12 of these units will be for homeless veterans and also for chronic homeless individuals. Now, we can't say enough and give a shout out to Catholic Charities for all their support through the years, and I know there's a group of them back in our team. Um, I hope you're proud of what we've done here. Also, Edwina Martin House has been a great local provider for so many women trying to gain sobriety. They've been a great partner with us through the years. Now, you can't do a project like this unless you have local support. And the mayor, through the Brockton Redevelopment Authority and Robert Jenkins and his team, committed $50,000 of their home funds for this project very early on. And we really needed that money to then be able to go to our other state and federal funders to say, we've got a local community, we've got a local mayor, we've got local officials that think this is the right thing to do. So with that, you know, with that 50,000 of home funds, which comes from HUD, Brockton only gets $400,000 a year. So it deserves and needs a lot more. But getting 50,000 um, of that really helped us go to other people. And we were able to leverage close to $5 million. So with that, the mayor, that's a pretty good return. And um, that's important to us, is to leverage local dollars, state dollars, federal and private. This is a model that we should all be proud of. And um, with that, I'd like to thank Mayor Carpenter for his support. And I'd like to ask him to come up. Well, good morning, everyone. It's great to see you all here, and particularly see so many community leaders and business leaders uh, joining us this morning. And uh, John, you're right, I do believe in this model. This, this is the model that works. And permanent housing for people that are transitioning out of chronic homelessness, micro units, small efficiencies with supports and services on site uh, to help people succeed uh, it's a big part of the solution, and it's a type of housing we need more of. I didn't always feel that way. So, um, when the project across the street was first being proposed, uh, and I had just become mayor, I initially opposed that project. And uh, I think that the lesson I learned was to do your homework before you come to a conclusion. Um, but the fact of the matter is I did initially oppose it. I think even to the point where we wouldn't issue the building permit. And I'm pretty sure John took me to court. <laughs> <laughs> True story. <laughs> um, but that's where communication became very important because John and some of his folks from Father Bill's they educated me as to what the project really was. I had heard a lot of misinformation that just wasn't true. And I toured 26 Spring Street a couple times, a very similar model. I went up to Quincy and toured some properties up in Quincy uh, that are operated by Father Bills. And uh, you know, I'm a big fan of, for those of you who remember, Coach Bill Parcells. My favorite Bill Parcells quote is I reserve the right to change my mind. 
and that's what I did. I changed my mind uh, because this is the right model, and, and it's critical. And so many folks want to complain about the images of our chronically homeless population, but very few offer solutions. And this is an important part of the solution, and it ties in and aligns with goals that our city believes in. And particularly the fact that more than half of these units are designated for a veteran's preference, intended for a veteran's trans transitioning out of homelessness. And about three or four years ago, I took a pledge, I joined mayors from across the country, and I took a pledge to end veterans' homelessness in our city. And we're not there yet, but we're a lot closer than we used to be. And this is a big step in that direction. And uh, so I thank so much everyone that's been involved in making this happen. It has both the project across the street and this project, they have improved the neighborhood. They are going to the neighborhood. <laughs> I'm, I'm just very proud that we were able to be one small part of it. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you for that. I think it's important for everybody to know that sometimes we can agree to disagree, but then we can come back together and do great things together. So we look forward to the future. Um, you know, when we when you start to even think about doing a project to this scope, not just for this site, but across the street, because both of these parcels was owned by the Archdiocese, and we purchased both of these parcels in 2013. Um, you have to realize that you need to work with your local counselors. And so we really early on, um, probably even before we made the offer to the Archdiocese, is we started to talk to Shirley Asak, this board's counselor, Ward 7, City of Rockton, about what we're all about and what we wanted to do. And uh, Shirley pulled together a community meeting. And we met over at one of the schools here and then when we developed this project, we met at Jack's place with the neighbors. And it just was a, you know, a constant communication and dialogue of good questions. Um, and without her support, of course, uh, this would have been a really difficult project to do. So, Shirley, we really thank you for all of your support in this project and making sure that everybody in this board was comfortable with what we were going to do. I'd love for you to come up. Cassidy, where this is his ward, was a, a longtime friend, colleague, uh, and worked side by side um, with the state senator. And now, of course, it, it, it is our rep 
and um, he's really been supportive of this project. Uh, he really galvanized the delegation when we put our state application in um, to get the funding for the project um, to say, let's all sign on to this uh, and stuff. So we really appreciate and I'd love for Jerry to come up today. I just want to say, go Red Sox! <laughs> hey, huh? I tell you, beat LA. Um, I just want to thank you, John. You, you stole more, more, more or less my speech. Um, uh, I'm just honored to be here, and we appreciate Father Bills uh, in our community. And uh, as you were saying, uh, Tom Kennedy was very instrumental in getting uh, the building Father Bills uh, uh, draft place across the street. And uh, I was in on those meetings, and he was uh, just a uh, wonderful guy to me in this. Uh, this 23 housing units, 12 of which are veterans, uh, is going to be very uh, uh, helpful to Brockton's uh, uh, downtown. And uh, just uh, a few years ago, I met a gentleman who was living across the street now. He was uh, homeless, and uh, he was uh, uh, Brocktonian, and you put him in across the street. He loves uh, uh, across the street the, uh, at uh, Patty's place, and uh, it's just been flourishing this whole area. And I'd like to uh, thank my colleagues, uh, Senator Brady and Rep. Cronin, for uh, being here, and uh, uh, Chairwoman uh, Cronin is uh, one of my heroes at the uh, State House. Without the funding um, mechanism, you know, me being on uh, Ways and Means is very instrumental, and I just uh, want to uh, send out our uh, uh, thanks for uh, being so very helpful. I'm the Secretary Chan. Thank you very much for uh, everything you do in the Baker for Legal Administration. I'd also like to uh, thank uh, Claire and Senator Brady for their support and Rep. Michelle Dubois, she's here. I'd like to ask uh, the delegation to come up, as I know uh, Senator Brady has uh, something to present today. Thank you, John, and um, we're very fortunate in Massachusetts. I like what you hear on the, on the fake news of Washington, we have a great team in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts working together across party lines, Republicans and Democrats, and thank you to the Secretary of the Banker Administration for your support. I'm very honored to serve on the Veterans Committee, and though we can never do enough for the veterans in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, in our country, Massachusetts leads the nation in veteran support, and through the help of our Fellow college, we passed the Welcome Home Bill a couple of years ago, the Valor Act 1 and 2. But we also passed some legislation this past year to help veterans for their death benefits and also to get tax breaks, and that's left up to the local municipalities to do so. But it, it's a team effort for that colleague, Representative Clay, for Representative Mary Cassidy, and then I'm going to tell the on our way, the other rep. But we have a great team and working with the local mayor and our city council. So they know I'll say he's actually one, thank you for your support, but we are very fortunate in the Commonwealth with the team effort, all of us working together. So this is a citation from the whole state delegation, being known that the state delegation offers congratulations to Father Bills and Main Spring House in recognition of their happy occasion of a new housing facility for homeless veterans and others at 682 North Main Street, and uh, it's signed by the delegation
I think the governor actually funded this within four months of getting the application, so, uh, which was great. Um, the state, DHCD, gave us $3.5 million for this project. And, um, you know, we are uh, really excited to have the undersecretary of DHCD, Janelle Chan, just came on board over the last several months. I just uh, saw her and saw her commitment to help homelessness um, at, a, at a recent meeting with all the homeless providers in the state. Um, so with that, we're excited to be working with you in the future, and uh, we're really appreciative for you to come out today, and thank you for supporting this project. We'd love to have Janelle come on. administration has worked hard over the last four years to address the housing challenges of all of our communities. All our communities face the crises of housing and affordable housing. So a few quick highlights. I want to highlight is that we've committed $1.1 billion in capital funding for the next five years towards housing production and preservation. That's an 18% increase. With our friends and colleagues at, in the legislature, representatives and senators, thank you so much for helping us pass the largest, largest housing bond bill in Massachusetts history. That's $1.8 billion with a capital B. <laughs> <laughs> and we've announced a new Housing Choice Initiative, a multi-pronged approach to addressing commonwealth housing crisis. We funded over 15,000 housing units, and about half of those are affordable units. Affordable units that are for a range of incomes. For folks who are neighbors, our fathers, our mothers, our sisters, our friends, those who are in our community, right? And that includes 500 supportive units. We believe in housing first and providing that stabilizing base, but that housing is not enough. And projects like this understand that we need the support of communities as well as services to make sure that folks can reach their potential, their dreams. So with that, I want to again thank you, John, for inviting us. We are so proud as the Commonwealth to stand behind this project. And thank you, Mayor Carpenter, for changing your mind. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure we have a lot more projects that we can work on together and be part of the solution. Thank you. So, you know, $1.8 billion, we can maybe start to look at how much of that we can target to really for this population right here, and we can really, really talk about ending homelessness in the Commonwealth. So we'll be in touch about that. <laughs> <laughs> Well, um, you know, it's, uh, it's great about all the community support that we have. And, and um, probably about a year and a half ago, a couple of years ago, I was uh, asked to be a part of a, a, a small committee that would look at some of the National Housing Trust Fund money from HUD that was going to come to Massachusetts. And um, Roger Herzog from CDAC kind of co-chaired that uh, committee. And it was amazing to see how... Uh, on, with his support, 
um, we were able to look at if this new money comes to Massachusetts, maybe let's use it for supportive housing, uh, not just the mainstream affordable, which is so vital. Um, and that was just a tremendous commitment to see how we were going to shape policy and look at how the admin plan of the Commonwealth would look at targeting projects like this. Um, so with that, you know, uh, CDAC oversaw about 1.6 million of the money here um, as a financial conduit, and they've just been a partner on all three projects that we've done in Brockton through the years. So Roger, thank you for your support of this project. I'd love to have you come up. Then we get funded, right? 
<laughs> um, you know, mass housing through the CCRI program has been supporting our housing um, for decades. You know, mass housing and, and the support of Ed Chase there, every time we put a project in, um, and if there's been money there, they come in before anybody else. They're the first ones in because we know that Mass Housing and, and Ed Chase really believe in this type of supportive housing model. Uh, so with that, Ed, thanks for always being the first one in and uh, really believing in what we're trying to do here. Thank you, Ed. Hi, good morning to you all. Uh, so on behalf of the uh, leadership and the board and the staff at Mass Housing, I want to thank all of you who worked so hard to get to this point here today. Uh, by supporting uh, CCRI, Mass Housing demonstrates its commitment to affordable housing for those most in need, people with disabilities, low-income folks, veterans, and those who recover. It's our privilege to continue this long partnership with John uh, and Father Bills of Main Spring and other local and uh, state supporters. But it often seems like each housing project that's completed is just a small part of a solution to a big problem. But we're making progress. And of course, to put it in Red Sox context, uh, <laughs> the Bills of Main Spring now owns and operates, I think, about 480 permanent supported housing units. That's 11 more than the 469 seats that's available in Fenway Park's alcohol free sections in Far Left Field. <laughs> <laughs> if you ever want to get tickets for one night, everyone can come together. <laughs> Uh, so, um, but even better news than that the Red Sox are the way to a title uh, is that this building today becomes home, a real home for 23 individuals, and that's what's important. So, congratulations to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, as we're telling this story, you've seen how you have the team from the local community, and then we talked about the state. And now we get to the federal government. And um, you know, HUD um, you know, provides the home funds that we've brought up here today that's in this building. Uh, HUD really uh, administers the National Housing Trust Fund money to the states across this country. Thank HUD for being here today. We'd like to have Bob come up. Is he the nicest guy ever? <laughs> I mean, it's just like, I come in, it's always got a smile, and it makes me feel good. It's just, I'm not kidding. And I have prepared remarks, but I'm not going to read them. Uh, <laughs> on behalf of the week, my original administrator, uh, David Tilly, it's great to be here. Fifteen years ago this week was my first day, and I, I didn't know what the hell I was doing, and the first place I went was the Main Street House. And I, I came over from DHCD years ago. I didn't work with homelessness, but the first time that I ever learned something was when I went to Main Street. And I learned a lot. And I, I, that was the beginning of a long journey about the problems that we have in our region, the problems that we have in America. And the great thing about my job is that you know I get to think big picture, but I also get to be here, and I get to work with people like John. The people in this room, you're all great people. And there's so many leaders here. Like the, like the mayor said, I changed my mind. And that's a great piece of what we're here today, because we need to change other people's minds. This is about community, and I know I say, I say broken record, but people don't know what records are anymore, got empty freeze and stuff. But you know, it's about community, and it's about changing people's minds, and it's about revitalizing both the physical characteristics of our community, but also about the people. We're all together in this, and veterans who have served our country so well, we do, we owe them so much. And there are so many troubled things that we have to deal with in today's environment. These are the beginnings, and these are the continuum of the things that need to happen to turn places around. Brockton has been on the precipice of a huge turnaround. It's just great every time I come here to see the changes and within the neighborhoods and the feeling of real progress being made. And it's not just here, it's around the Commonwealth. And I want to talk about partnerships what a great partnership we have with DHCD, CDAG, and all the other uh, quasi nonprofit agencies, and really to bring it back to places like Father Bill's, which 
is on the ground, making a difference, dealing with people, and I mean people, humans on the local level uh, that really need our help. The, the most successful communities that we see are inclusive communities that treat everybody equally, that really help people and understand that we're all in this together. And so, if it's one thing I want to say, it's about the partnership that we all, the bond that we all have in this room, what we need to keep in sight as far as our goals. I can't tell you how much uh, it means that the Commonwealth has put through the bond bill, the use of our housing trust fund, that the city has used our home funds. But it's not just about the money, it's about the people, which is a real thing that we're trying to do. And it's through creative people like, I, I mean, I love John. He's lobbying when he's up here, you know, talking to us. And, but that's what he's got to do. He's got to change people's minds, and he needs to make stuff happen. And he is such a great partner, and he's helped so many people. And I'm so proud to be here uh, with this wonderful structure, but more importantly, the great folks that are going to live there. Thanks very much. Thanks, Bob. Um, you know, all of these projects also need private funding from the community. And, um, you know, and we still are uh, raising money. So if you know people, uh, we, we will continue to raise money for, for this project. Uh, but I just want to shout out to a few people. Um, the United Way of Greater Plymouth County has contributed to this project upcoming. Dennis Carmen, the executive director, is here today. Um, my brother's keeper is donating all the beds to this place. Thank you for having me out here. And the Harvard One uh, Foundation, run by J Jennifer White, has contributed to the first year of the operating cost to, to help us run this building next year. Thank you to all of your help here. Now, the Home Depot Foundation has a, a, a national foundation. And so they take uh, applications from across this country. And their sole foundation mission is to go to housing for homeless veterans. And uh, we're really excited that both the project at Jack and Patty's place and this place, the Home Depot Foundation, um, at a national level, has awarded this project $100,000. Thank you. Lord, please come out to the Home Depot. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Since 2011, the Home Depot Foundation has donated over a quarter of a billion dollars to projects similar to this one. As a result, 40,000 veteran homes and facilities positively impacted or enhanced. Team Depot has also impacted more than 33,000 homes and facilities for veterans across all 50 states. Giving back to veterans is personal to the Home Depot since more than 35,000 of our associates are veterans or an active duty military. Because veterans are such a big part of our own company culture, we understand the importance of honoring and serving those who have served us all. I've worked for Home Depot for 24 years, and I'm as excited today as I was when I participated in my first community project many years ago. Giving back to the community is a core value the company founders established in 1979 and that commitment remains as strong today as it was almost 40 years ago. Taking care of others is the fabric Home Depot is built upon, which is what makes Home Depot and Father Bills and Mainspring such great partners. As I listen today to the accomplishments Father Bills and Mainspring have achieved in ending and preventing homelessness and working to provide life skills to those most vulnerable, I find myself so thankful there are organizations such as Father's Bill, Father's, Father's Bills and Mainspring and that the Home Depot can play a role in supporting such an important cause. Congratulations again, John. Thank you, everyone. So the last part of, of the story is really about you, you got to bring the banks to the table to pull off projects like this. And um, Harbor One Bank uh, has been there for us since 2005, serving meals, running drives, supporting the Mainspring House and now Father Bills and Mainspring. 
In 2007, when we merged, um, we asked Jim Blake to come on and help co-chair a committee of people in this community that we could end chronic homelessness. And one of the things we looked at was is this type of housing model. So we really appreciate Harbor One's continued support. They are the permanent lender for Jack's Place and Patty's, and now they're the permanent lender for Montello Welcome Home again. So with that, I want to thank Jim and everybody at Harbor One for their support and ask Jim to come up and say a few words. <laughs> you know, one of the, uh, in, in the sense of trying to put all this funding and all these partners together, um, you know, we, uh, across the street a few years ago, we tried to get, uh, with the support of Harbor One putting it in the application, we tried to get the Federal Home Loan Bank uh, to be a part of the project, and it's an unbelievably tough process uh, um, that, that you have to compete against. But we were able to um, put in an application through Harbor One with the Federal Home Loan Bank for this project. Now, what is the Federal Home Loan Bank, right? Well, it's a bank for banks. And its, mis its mission is to support housing, financing in our community to develop projects like this for low-income people. Now. We are so happy to say that we've uh, got a subsidized loan uh, with them for this project with Harbor One and the Federal Home Loan Bank, but they also gave us a $200,000 grant to go towards this project. So uh, we're just excited to bring the Federal Home Loan Bank to Brockton and to support um, ending homelessness. Uh, so with that, I'd like to ask Toby Goldberg to come up. Welcome home again, a reality. 
and all of the work that you do, not just in this project, but that you do in a greater scheme to prevent homelessness and assist families and individuals in achieving their goals. And most importantly, congratulations and welcome home to your new residents. So um, PCI Loan uh, Property Couch Initiative has been with us early on. Uh, they actually provided the mortgages for Mainstream House, the shelter, and Evelyn House, our family shelter, um, decades ago. So they've been a long time friend, lender, and they get it. They get it from day one. Um, in this project, just like Jack's across the street, they come in and they say, we are absolutely comfortable giving you pre-development money. We'll absolutely let you and help you purchase the land, um, not knowing or knowing that we still have to go out and get money from the rest of you. So with that, it's just a tremendous uh, vote of confidence in organizations like ourselves that you've got lenders out there that understand the affordable housing world. Uh, so we thank uh, Paula Zakin and uh, Stacy for their continued support of our mission. Uh, so with that, I'd like to ask Stacy Townsend to come up from PCI. So I didn't have a lot of prepared remarks because I was usually going to just say, fabulous job, I want to see the houses, it's great to be here, but since you mentioned it, you know that first project that we did? That was 15 years ago, and PCI is only 19 years old, I started it 19 years ago, and you are now our oldest consistent customer in, in the history of the company. It's only on the I have to say that the relationship started because it was an, a bad situation with another town who was listening to wrong stories and neighbors who didn't understand who you were and what you were doing, um, and unfortunately a bank that wasn't willing to play nice and support you. So that's where we started in the worst of all possible scenarios. I got to say 15 years later, this has been a wonderful relationship for us. Your mission aligns with us so perfectly, um, and the quality of the homes that you're creating here is, is phenomenal. So we love what you do. We love doing it with you. We love that Harbor One is now being a, a, a two partner in this with us too, and this is our second time where we've done the beginning, and they've taken the permanent, because we're only an $85 million fund, so we can't do that for you. So. The partnership is working. We love what we're doing with you guys and with Harbor One's help. And we look forward to the next one, too. You know, as we wrap up, um, we have a tremendous development team that puts these projects together. Um, I'd like to just recognize our development team. We have Emily Rothschild, our development consultant. We have um, Elton and Hampton Architects. Uh, Char Curtis, Curtis Construction, was the GC for the project. Um, Pink and Company was our uh, clerk of the works and the owner's rep. So they wanted to keep me out of the meetings. And um, our project attorney, of course, was uh, Anthony Matera. I also want to give also a, a quick shout out to our team um, that help work day by day, every day on this project. Uh, April Conley, our COO, and uh, Harry Deemer, the facility manager. That team right there put this project off, so thank you. Thank you. You know, we, uh, 
we, you know, we, we started our mission um, over 30 years ago, and it was it, it's very interfaith to us. It's, it's making sure that we take care of our uh, citizens at, at a local level. And uh, I've had the honor to work side by side um, with uh, Reverend um, and uh, John Denny, the president of Stonehill College, as he's on our board of directors. Uh, so I'd like to ask uh, Father Denny to come up and give us a house blessing. Lord, be close to your servants who move into the Montello Welcome Home again and ask for your blessing. Be their shelter when they are at home, their companion when they are away, and their welcome guest when they return. May they find in this their new home a place of serenity and peace, a place of community and hope. We ask your blessing upon all of us gathered here today. Together, may we seek to end homelessness and work to further your kingdom to live and reign forever and ever. Amen. I will ask the color guard to please retire the colors. In closing, I'd just like to say that um, when I came to Father Bill's in Mainspring in 1996, about 20 to 25 percent of the homeless population were veterans. This year, we were down to about 11 to 12 percent. It's 11 or 12 percent too many, but projects like this, we are on our way to ending veterans homelessness in Southern Mass. Thank you for all of your support. Please tour the building if you haven't yet, and I would ask our speakers to join us in the front for a ribbon cutting. God bless everybody. Have a great day. Thank you.